is your host Rava Huja coming to you from the IBM Toronto lab. We're here with uh, Tim Vincent. Tim, would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Tim Vincent. I'm the chief architect for DB2 on the Linux, Unix and Windows platform. Um, my responsibilities are the overall architecture of the product and the technical strategy. So Tim, uh, we've been hearing about this best practices for DB2. What is it all about? So. Over the last few years, I've had, um, I was presenting actually in the Gold Consultants about three years ago, and one of the Gold Consultants asked me if we had any best practices that they could give to their, their clients. And I've also had other customers and other, other partners ask the same question, you know, do you have a definitive set of best practices? So this is a topic that's come up uh, more and more frequently over the years, and it's been driven by several factors. Um, the one factor is that there's a lot of um, capability in DB2. It, you know, customers use DB2 from anything from small systems, developing small systems on Express, Express C, to mid-range OLTP applications where they have thousands of instances of DB2 deployed, to extreme um, HA systems with OLTP where they're running things like stock trading applications. And, and then you can go past space where you have small data marts, small reporting servers up to warehouses which are in the hundreds of terabytes of size. So there's a lot of different usage patterns around DB2 and a lot of different technologies to support that. And you know, it's one of the, one of the issues that people have had is when to use specific technologies. You know, not all technologies will work in all paradigms. So there's the issues around when and how do I use technology. So there was a lot of questions coming out. We're also seeing that the, the availability of skill in the industry is getting increasingly more difficult to find and that the level of skill in some cases is not, is not necessarily there. So if we can actually come up with a definitive set of practices that we know will work and we can help bootstrap people's skill, that will be a real positive for, for not only DB2 but for our customers as well. Sounds good. Can you get a little bit more specific, you know, give us an example of a kind of a best practice? Okay, one of, the, one of the best practices, one of the documents that I think is, is really good is around lifecycle management and lifecycle management with compression. So if you're a warehouse customer and you're actually rolling in data and you're rolling out data and you want to actually compress that data, what is the, what is the best vehicle to do that? So it talks about the, the best practice will go through how to use range partitioning, how to use range partitioning with um, compression, how to deal with different types of roll-in operations, roll-ins where your granularity of roll-in is more fine grain than you roll out, how to actually maintain and keep the best levels of compression as you're rolling in data, how to deal with data skew. So that, that's one really good example and it combines both the topics of how to you know, manage the life cycle of your data and also keep your data compressed so you can maintain your storage savings. So who comes up with these best practices? Is it something that you develop in the lab? Actually, that's, I'm glad you asked that question. That's really important. This isn't just a set of thoughts the development team have come up with on how we think the technology should be best put together. We actually developed these, um, th these documents as a cooperative effort between customers, business partners, field practitioners, and developers. So the goal here is to make sure that what we're recommending is what is being um, used in the field, is being used successfully in the field, and the field practitioners will agree with and actually recommend. So this isn't just a theoretical set of uh, practices put together by the development team. It really is a cooperative effort. This has been good for um, not only the field people, to get the, the, the linkages with the development team, but it's been good for the developers to see and get much more detail of how people are actually using the technology today. So it really is a cooperative effort to make sure that the best practices are practical and based in, in reality versus just theory. What kinds of best practices are available on what sorts of topics? The, uh, the best practices actually cover pretty well the whole life cycle. It covers any, anything from the initial deployment of DB2, which will go over things like how you actually install, how you deploy, how you deploy and deploy thousands, how you do uh, fixed pack maintenance, to storage layout, you know, what are the best practices for managing storage, to virtualization, life cycle management of the data, um, workload management, uh, compression, monitoring, system tuning, queries, right through to the TCO aspects. It really does cover the overall life cycle of the, 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 the management of DB2. There's approximately 15 best practices today and we're working on another two or three as we speak. Um, we've just released uh, a new best practices on HADR. We're working on a best practice on recovery and we're working on a best practices around monitoring. Are you planning to keep these best practices current? 
or are they basically you published it and that's pretty much it? No, the, the, the keeping them current is actually very important and, and we're, one of the things we're doing to actually help keep them current is um, we, we've, got a, we've got a dedicated resources around these now so as we in, improve the products, we put out new releases, they will always be updated uh, for the new releases. We're actually trying to align our documentation um, more around a best practice type of paradigm. And the other thing we're doing is we actually put the best practices out on a wiki, again on developer works. And, and this wiki is available for any customers or anyone that can actually has an idea on developer works to go in and change the documents themselves. So we really want to make these living documents and use wikis to actually continuously maintain them. That sounds great. Thank you very much, Tim, for taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you, Rob. Thank you.